If injustice is part of the necessary friction of the machine of government, let it go, let it go. Perchance the friction will wear it smooth. Certainly the machine will wear out. If the injustice has a spring or a pulley or a rope or a crank exclusively for itself, then perhaps you may consider whether the remedy, your trouble in an effort to change it, will not be worse than the evil, the injustice. But if it is of such a nature that it requires you to be the agent of injustice to another, then I say, break the law. Let your life be a counter friction to stop the machine. What I have to do is to see at any rate that I do not lend myself to the wrong which I condemn. Henry David Thoreau, uh, from On Civil Disobedience, 1849. Our present political system of operating our government is completely broken. Thus so irrationally but intentionally polarized are much of the population who are forever induced to support prominent political cell groups controlling our government, distinct from, but in cahoots with, the electorate office holders, and then again the correspondingly, distinctly polarized news media, so that compromise cannot even be allowed to appear to exist. Any such function of proposed or supposed agreement between office holders of either stripe with their opposite number is immediately broadcast by both respective lapdog media platforms, these claiming betrayal of principle or unworthiness to hold office. For compromise serves neither those in power nor their media in their goal of maintaining the monetary conditions of the status quo so favorable, so favorable to them now. Naturally, they only support that proposition, believing themselves that if things do not change, then it follows, then things will not change for themselves. The caliber of the pool of candidates for higher office today in the United States is so poor and so self-aware of that fact that these creatures are virtually interchangeable once elected, so that they do not dare attempt any action except to bend to the winds that may blow from the poles of their donors, and as bid them by the media reportage, state events can hardly be termed government at all. From its undeniable results, plainly observable in the acts of our elected officials at present and rooted directly back to the Ronald Reagan administration. Rather than a functional government, we are experiencing a symptomatic redistribution of the savings, labor, and even homes and possessions of all American citizens and others worldwide of only moderate income levels to an increasingly narrow group of wealthy persons their minions in various corporate, government, and media interests. This is being perpetrated brazenly by the open purchase of power by the proverbial 1%, acting thus as if they were buying elections on eBay, and also buying up personal control of entire media platforms as if they were Bush League sports franchises. So, new cycle to new cycle, election cycle to primaries, to primary cycle, we have gone about our lives knowing something is badly wrong, but not quite able to see it or actually believe what is happening to us all. International treaties and jobs and even the capital equipment that workers here once operated to overseas, so-called good jobs, are now almost completely gone from manufacturing, leaving at best the pursuit of medical, government, data services, and the arts for most persons as the only ways to earn a decent level of income. So thus institutional higher education, health insurance, a home mortgage, a family are largely unattainable for anyone who cannot get financial help from their family or elsewhere. Even military combat veterans get snot tissue treatment from a corrupt Congress that cares only for the money that gives them power and advantage. Present governance equals swindle. This analysis follows from the equational system relating great complexity here, even when broken down into bite-sized chunks. I want to emphasize strongly that the state we are in is mainly perpetuated by a long life packed with known and acknowledged errors in living, oblivious to certain of the political and economic factors considered in this system. 
These, on, these allow others to annually mow hay from out of our unguarded distraction. This equation is offered only as a tool to put all the things you already know into a framework that will give you a perspective not only of how we got to this sad economic and political state, but how we can win back our nation by peaceful means. Listen to your woman, but not closely. Listen to your woman, but not closely.